you know, sometimes somebody will say uh, that they don't have enough of something. I don't, I don't have enough money or something like that. And what comes to my mind is you don't have enough ideas. Right. You know, if you have ideas, <clears throat> you can turn those ideas into something and you can profit. <laughs> right. You can profit from those things. And when it comes to the body, it seems like there's infinite things that you can try that you can kind of mess around with. And, and eventually you'll find stuff that feels right. What are your thoughts on like Sturette, uh mentioning things like having a super friend, like having and Seema and I just like work on each other, like, oh, yeah. you know, an elbow in the back or a mm -hmm. heel into the hamstring type yeah. thing. Also, you think, I mean, spouses, this is a very fun yeah. way for you guys to do some things to each other, you know, while also freeing up some tissues. That's right. I'm actually mm -hmm. going to be creating a course for spouses. So there you wait. go. <laughs> They're coming soon. Uh, so one uh, thing leads to another. Yeah. <laughs> when your wife isn't in the mood. Is it titled <laughs> coming soon? <laughs> it, it, it can. <laughs> we, we, we could. I don't think I would get the, uh, the genre of people that I'm looking for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. We, and it, it'll be with your, with your instructor in SEMA. That, that, there you go. There you go. Hey, Sam, if you want to duel on this, let's, let's, we can make a tape. So, because my, my brain went south after that, I forgot what we were. What I was just kinda, yeah, just uh, haven't seen my wife in seven days. <laughs> like, Damn, I need to get home. Uh, so you got the magic touch and maybe other people don't. Oh but, yeah. Super but, friend, super yeah, friend. Exactly. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. The whole thing is just don't be too rough, you know, and you're going to get bros and they're like, they're going to find an adhesion in the hamstring and you're in the middle of the gym, maybe working on each other. And it's going to be funny, right? The thing about pressure in the human body, you put too much and your body thinks that it's incurring an injury, mm. okay? You don't put enough and your body is just like, well, that tickles. I'm not going to really change my arrangement. Mm -hmm. So you need to have this kind of finesse aspect to where you're constantly checking in with the person that you're working on. And one of the biggest tell-alls, there's two of them, okay? You want to look at like the opposite leg if you're working on one or opposite arm or foot or something like yeah, that. foot or hand and you see it yep. going all weird. <laughs> and then you also want to like, look oh, at... Shit. Yep, you also want to look at the eyes, mm. okay? The eyes will tell... Uh, like, think about it. When something starts to hurt, you're either going to be like... <laughs> or you're just going to be like... You know, one of your either the eyes are going to get really big, or you're going to close and start breathing and start focusing. So breath could be another one. Um, you know, when I was working on Mark, Chris, you you guys knew when I got into those tight corners, you were like, okay, start. Let me start breathing. All right, because that's going to help the system relax, and we're going to get more done. Okay, so my biggest thing when you have a super friend, just don't turn it into a joke. Don't turn it into playtime, because yes, you can actually make something worse if the body is guarding an area and you come in there with a bazooka, <laughs> you know, Ric Flair style, drop a chair or an elbow, like right into an adhesion, right? Then the body's just going to be like, dude, I didn't like that. Yeah. And it's going to tighten up or stiffen up even more. Okay. Where if you go in gently and you're like, typically people who can't take pain very well, you're looking at between four to six on a pain scale of 10 that you want to work around. And I mean, with guys like you, I'll push it up to around eights, you know, so we'll work between like six to an eight for the most part. So those are some guidelines. Don't make it play time. You know, don't try to get, don't press so hard to get such a, a, a funny reaction out of your friend, out of your super friend or whatever, and work in between those four to six or six to eight ranges mm -hmm. and you're good. You know, um, I, I, I truly, I, I truly feel that it's silly, more people, especially couples, are not working on themselves. Yeah. You know, like I'll I'll have significant others come with a wife or a husband that's having pain. And even in the husband's case, they'll be like, dude, I don't know how you, th this is appointment eight for the day. Like if I work on my wife for five minutes on her trap, my hand is cramping, mm. you know? And I just say, well, I guess I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing with, with my life and my time, mm -hmm. you know, because my hands don't cramp from that. They never have. All right, but really it just comes down to those those couple of things that I mentioned, just guidelines. But yeah, I absolutely believe that, you know, especially if you are a parent and your kid is very athletic, like what's what's wrong with being like, hey son, come here, lay on the bed 
And I'm just going to kind of like search around in your quads and in your calf muscles to see if there's anything that doesn't belong. You know, and you get in there and the tissue feels good for the most part, except you got this one little rough patch. Apply a little bit of pressure, four to six, something like that. Let the body work itself out. And you just potentially got rid of a knee injury that might have occurred in like five or six years. Yeah. You know, but... Like, I mean, I'm going to be working on it. I don't know if my daughter is going to be an athlete, but I'm going to be working on my daughter probably at least once or twice a week when she starts to um, do athletics and whatnot. And, you know, uh, when I was working with uh, Devon Best, he was a wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins. He would go into practice on Friday and be practicing like it was Monday. And all of his teammates started to kind of like catch on and be like, hey, bro, what are you doing? Like, how come... You're practicing so well on a Friday after, you know, we we had a game on Sunday and then practice all week. My, my guy CK, he does body work three, four times a week on me. You know, and I started, I realized, I was like, if I get Devon's deadlift five pounds heavier, 10 pounds heavier, maybe the groceries feel lighter next time he goes to the supermarket, okay? The guy's at the top of the top, but his body's his paycheck, so if I keep his tissue open and free, He's not going to get injured. He's not going to be running and pull a hamstring. And then he's out the next two or three games or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so really for me, it just comes down to keeping the, 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 the fascial system healthy. If you got a friend that can work on you and you can work on, on them without, you know, being silly or whatnot, then go ahead and do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make Instagram videos about it. <clears throat> You, Graham, right. Mark, all just fucking come in and attacking me, squeezing me as hard as freaking possible, especially Graham. He would just get like all up in the pecs. Oh, that's a massage. That's different. That's a massage. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Same thing then. Yeah. It's yeah. massage therapy. It's not fun. <laughs> we're just <laughs> trying to get me. you. A, we're just trying to get you an erection. That's all we're <laughs> trying to do. <laughs> I'd love if you guys massage my traps. Yeah. But See? no one ever wants to do it to me. I'm sitting here. Do it to me. Sitting there just waiting. He's just asking for it. I want it. Because I don't want it, I'm not going to do it back. <laughs> well, I won't do it to you, but you can do it to me. I <laughs> Andrew's to complaining about getting massaged. He is. He doesn't That's like where it. this show is going. Well, we'll, we'll stop. God damn it. Massage. You guys are like, oh, you oh. still missed. Oh, for two. And oh, for Graham two. was the worst. He would like dig his finger into my pet. He's trying to And it would point. like go out the my back like mm. it was just fucking yeah so nuts. here's That's an thing. interesting thing right there what you just said got strong yeah thumbs. here's fat project family how's it going now we like to look good in the gym and out of the gym uh that's why you always see mark and i and andrew is stepping up on the short short game mm-hmm. wearing shorts from viore and clothes from viore and honestly the number one compliment that i've seen that I've gotten and even Mark's gotten is, damn, your butt looks good. <laughs> and that's because, well, the clothes we wear make our booties look mm-hmm. uh, delicious. Andrew, how can they get it? <laughs> yeah, you guys both have pretty big wagons. Uh, you guys can head over to viori.com slash power project. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash power project to receive 20% off the most amazing apparel that looks so good inside and outside. It's going to make your ass look Fat and, and your ass like will that. look fat. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. It's gonna make your ass look fat. <laughs> Here's the thing. You can put enough pressure on any of the area of the body to make it hurt really, really bad. Oh, yeah. Okay, so just don't be that guy. Yeah. Don't don't be that guy. And like I was saying earlier, you know, your your friend's like, Man, I got something in my <laughs> pack. Can you try and work it out? And then you feel something and you're like, oh, what is it right there? Ha ha ha. <laughs> and then you just drive your finger or your thumb or your elbow down as hard as you can. We may have done that to Andrew a couple of times. And, now in, I think in about order, it. In order to a get a reaction. There's a of video footage of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so shame on you guys. What are some, shame I, on you. I know some of your thoughts surrounding uh, energy and surrounding like uh, we went on a walk one day and we were talking about like left side male female type stuff and then the, the lower back and can you share some of that with us and then oh boy i i know <laughs> i know it paints us into a weird corner yeah well, uh cool. but i think it is important for people to just for people to hear some of these things because i i i don't know i tend to be just open to these possibilities so we'll tell everybody to get their tin foil hats on right now Mine's okay on. get the tin, get the tin foil <laughs> hat on there you go <laughs> 
Um, there, there are certain representations or classifications in the human body that have been known for quite some time, for, for a really, really long period of time. And like I said, as medicine kind of advances, are we really getting smarter with shots, pills, robots, things like that? What I feel is we're actually getting further and further away from what nature and the body intended because we didn't have these things like meridians, Chinese meridians in the body. They've been around for 4,000 years. Mm -hmm. They're real. They're identifiable. I've tried to open somebody's quadratus lumborum. It's a muscle in the lower back on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, okay? Try to open it up, and the dang thing is just being non-responsive, okay? Say, all right, start asking a couple of questions. Oh, so you got in an accident six years ago, you crashed your car, you almost hit a lady and killed her, okay, that, that was just walking on the sidewalk, you went into immediate, like, fear response. And what I found was that when I started working on the gallbladder meridian, that quadratus lumborum opened up, okay? So that's number one. We're looking at meridians in the human body, and we have one that's attached to every single organ, and when these organs get into stress, they call out to the neuromuscular system for help, okay? We've known this for 4,000 years, Chinese, Chinese medicine. This is some of okay. the stuff that Ben uh, Clarefield worked on me with, where he, like, pushed on my nose and some of that mm-hmm. stuff, and some of the stuff that Charles Poliquin did with <clears throat> jamming the uh, pen cap into my the bed nail of my finger. Sure, sure. So emotions, fascia does not have any eyes. Okay, it can't see what's going on in the outer world. So it relies on input from our emotions in order to get a sense of what's happening. Some of the worst people that I work on have absolutely no physical injuries. It's all emotional trauma. Okay, worked with a lot of addicts, okay, drug addicts and whatnot. They haven't played sports. They're not bench pressing 800, but their entire body is filled with adhesions. What gives? It's all emotional trauma. Okay. So how you feel with your environment, okay, gets translated into how healthy your fascia and your organs are. All right. So a lot of people are in this constant fight or flight. They're locked in this adrenal phase that they can't get out of because the body experiences everything as a threat, okay? And like I said, fascia doesn't have eyes. It doesn't realize that I, can't, that I can just go to the supermarket and get some food, okay? It realizes like I've been fasting too much, okay? I surely must be starving and there must not be any food available anywhere. And in an inexperienced dieter, that can create a lot of problems with the stomach meridian. It can create a lot of problems with emotions surrounding food, okay, that then translate to restriction in specific areas of the body, okay? So... I'm sure you guys have heard of people doing body work on somebody and releasing trauma. And then all of a sudden they're just like crying uncontrollably. Yeah. Right. It doesn't happen. I'm not going to sit here and say it happens every day, but I would probably say maybe two, three times a year, I'll get a client like that, you know, where I'll I'll press on something and I'll, I'll just get an immediate release. And then all of a sudden they, a lot of weird emotional stuff starts going on with them. And I'm like, it's okay. You know, just let it pass through, you know, be the observer. We're, we're getting that out of your body, mm-hmm. okay? And all of these emotions that we have, they start off as little neutrinos in our brain and they travel down the nerve and they go to specific areas. You get really, really angry and you're going to get tight in the, in the head, neck, and shoulders. Now, you're not angry anymore. Where did all that stress go? It didn't go anywhere. Not if you're not working it out and applying a little bit of pressure, easing the tension in the system, it stays. But the feeling went away. So everybody thinks that it's gone, right? And it's not. So that's number one. Emotions or your perception of your environment will directly equate 
to the health of your internal system. Yeah. Okay. Even if there's no threat. And I told Mark the other day, I think it was you, that our body hasn't really caught up with the evolutionary times. Okay. It's not really didn't subscribe to that newsletter yet. There are studies that have been done that show our brain lights up more fear sensors with the picture of a snake compared to the picture of a gun. Now, a gun, if you got a good enough sniper, like shout out to Chris Kyle, right? From a mile away can kill me instantly. Snake has to be like two, three feet away. Mm -hmm. And then in some instances, I think you even said, you, you're not going to really die right away. Like it would take a long time and you might even be able to come back from it and be totally fine in some cases. Okay. So our body really hasn't caught on to, to the evolutionary times yet and whatnot. When we look at other representations in the body, the left side of the body is female. The right side of the body is male. Now, here's the thing. My dad was never very supportive of me when I was growing up. He wasn't a bad person, okay? But he wanted me to do certain things. He wanted me to be a golfer, and I wanted to be a football player. So when I chose to play football instead of golf, my dad was kind of like, I'm not really going to support you anymore type of a thing. Okay. He was like, why do you want to play football? You're going to sit the bench. And that gave me enough fuel to be starting at five positions within three games. Shit. Okay. So what ended up hurting first on me was my right knee. Okay. And then there are people that come to me where they have a problem with their left knee or their left hip. Okay. And Nothing that I'm doing is working and I can't figure it out. All right. And I'm like, tissue, everything is saying that, you know, all systems go, we're good. And then I'll ask them, I go, do you have a problem with any females in your life? I just be like, gosh, like which ones don't I have a problem with? <laughs> and I'm like, did you have a problem with your mother? Yeah, of course. My mom always told me to be anorexic and said that, you know, you should, that, that, you're, that you're not pretty unless if you're 65 pounds and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, you know, um, this is beyond what I'm going to be able to do for you. You need to do some emotional work surrounding that because that's the only reason that I can think of that this is occurring mm. right now. Okay. Um, we can look at other things in the body, like uh, there are representations in the astral plane saying, you know, your left heel opening up or, or having pain in your left heel means that you're growing spiritually. Okay. Anecdotal. I have no studies, once again, that show this, mm -hmm. but just like I disclaimed earlier, life is more exciting when you're looking at things that you can't touch, taste, feel, hear, and see, okay? Um, pain in the right side back is typically characteristic of too much physical work in the, in the world. Power Project family, a lot of the guys in the audience said that they hate me whispering, so I won't whisper anymore. I'll just whisper here. Again. So go ahead and comment down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and check out all our sponsors here in the bio or the description. Okay. All right. Bye.